I want to talk about brain computer interfaces for a bit, and the Final Fantasy XIV player Nathan that has unlocked the next level of gaming. Links to his YouTube channel and Reddit post are in the description below. Please give him a follow and support him. Likewise, he provided a link to his LinkedIn profile with official publications. If you're interested in that, please do check that out. And also remember to of course support him because you know what, he is making a huge difference and thank you Nathan so much for sharing this story with all of us. So this is a topic that I am actually extremely passionate about as I followed the neuroscience program for my first degree and went above and beyond it, taking extra courses in stuff like human neuroanatomy, human cadavers, neuropharmacology, and a ton more. And then I got a second degree in computer science and it has been long long time my passion to fuse the two fields together. So seeing this story and being able to cover it is honestly one of the most exciting and utterly freaking awesome things ever to me. So I want to share a little bit about how this works because I actually got a lot of messages in my inbox asking and I saw a lot of questions in the thread and so I decided, you know what, let's do it. And so there will be no pictures or anything that could be potentially considered offensive or graphic in any capacity in this, unless you consider, of course, my hideous Microsoft Paint skills offensive and graphic, which would be fair. I can't disagree. But I figured it, that's something that I should make clear in case anyone was kind of scared. So in the footage you can see Nathan, who was paralyzed in a car accident back in 2004, controlling none other than Final Fantasy XIV character with his brain basically fangirling at this point because in all of my time studying the brain in computers I have not once ever seen or expected someone to play an MMORPG with like a brain computer interface it was just not something I ever thought of let alone Final Fantasy 14 which is a game that I obviously love and so some people were asking things like what is it like to control it and so I'll quote Nathan's posts on this subreddit. So when asked by the user, the iris hole, can you control the character smoothly and accurately? How long have you been playing? Is your control steadily improving? Which areas of the brain are the wires connected to? What do you think to control the character? How does it feel? The response that he got was, I think control was smooth and accurate. I originally played in a Realm Reborn beta and a few years after release, I have enough arm movement left that I can play with a keyboard. Although major neck and shoulder pain is a part of the reason why I don't play much lately. This video is the first time I used a brain computer interface to play it. I have two microelectrode arrays implanted in the motor cortex, specifically the area that controls my right hand and arm, and two in the sensory cortex. Movement is controlled by thinking about moving my arm left and right and up and down, and the two buttons were thinking about wrist movement. And so right now we have him saying that playing Final Fantasy XIV with his mind is very intuitive, and he is clearly entering combat in the gameplay footage and being the enemies with relative ease. Seems kind of crazy, right? Well, let's shed some light on how this all works. So a disclaimer is that there are going to be some details like glial cells, neuropeptides, and neuroplasticity that I'm going to completely ignore here because that might be far too in-depth for this video and way out of scope on people just trying to get a grasp on what's going on. So if you hear those terms come up elsewhere then yeah those are extremely important things but they are really not in scope for the fundamentals. And so fundamentally we need to start by looking at the most basic building block of the nervous system for a discussion on how Nathan is controlling his Final Fantasy XIV character, the neuron. And you might be like whoa we're starting really low level but it'll make sense when I, it all comes together why this is so important. So the neuron is a cell type that can simply receive and transmit information based on the information a group of neurons transmit and receive, they result in various actions being taken. While the action of a single neuron may seem underwhelming when you first learn about it, the human brain is estimated to have around 100 billion neurons based on some articles, although the number varies with which article you look at, such as in this Wikipedia article it states 86 billion. As the gestalt psychologists may say, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So how neurons receive information is based on neurotransmitters that they receive from a previous neuron. We can think about these as little messages that one neuron sends to another. Neurons have a very particular threshold on how much neurotransmitters or messages that they must receive before they decide to transmit information further. Likewise, this means that neurons that aren't receiving enough information will simply not transmit information. Sort of like a lazy kid that needs to be asked to take out the garbage 10 times before they actually do it. Only 9 messages really won't get the garbage taken out so you're gonna need the full 10. However, if the neuron does receive enough stimulation, it will enter a process called the action potential. The action potential will result in an electrochemical signal being sent across the neuron based upon the changing ion gradients around the neuron. The key part about all of this is that this results in a voltage being produced that can range between negative 40 and negative 90 millivolts. And here is the most critical aspect of how Nathan is allowed to play Final Fantasy 14 with his brain signals. These millivolts are what we call brain signals, or rather, these millivolt values from groups of neuron action potentials combined together produce the brain signal, or more significant voltage. Fundamentally, these voltages are what the rest of the discussion on how this works is actually really based off of. 
So now that we've covered individual neurons, it's going to be very critical that we talk about the larger structure of the brain's anatomy. As I said earlier, the brain is based around billions of neurons communicating with one another, but the brain is a highly structured piece of biological machinery. It follows for the most part, of course, there are exceptions with neuroplasticity, brain trauma, and a whole host of other things that the brain will have particular functions located at particular places of the brain. In many ways, this makes the neural anatomy functional neural anatomy because the function is going to be tied to really relatively particular locations on the brain. Fortunately for us, and for the basis of how Nathan is playing Final Fantasy XIV, our concerns are on the external surface of the brain and not deeper. Of particular interest to us is on the brain surface is something called the motor cortex. Or of particular interest on that motor cortex is the primary motor cortex. Located on the primary motor cortex is something called the motor homunculus, and that's basically a mapped representation of your body's muscle functions to the brain. Likewise, if you move an arm or a leg, different parts of the primary motor cortex will have electrical activity. This is all based around the location of the electrical activity. Basically, that is the underpinning for how all of this is going to work. And so where on that motor homunculus has electrical activity can then be used to determine what part of the body is being moved. So to quote Nathan, yeah, the decoder was used and trained by looking at a 2D cursor and imagining some arm movement, then the signals are sent through a keyboard emulator. Playing through it feels very intuitive. So he stated that he imagined arm movement, and so this would activate the arm portion of the motor homunculus. But then how do we take these electrical signals from various parts of the motor homunculus and make it actually something useful? This is where electrode arrays come into play. Nathan stated, I have two microelectrode arrays implanted in the motor cortex, specifically the area that controls my right hand and arm, and two in the sensory cortex. To explain what an electrode array is, I first need to explain what an individual electrode is. An electrode is a solid material that is extremely effective at conducting electrical currents. This allows the electrode to pick up the voltage changes across the brain that happen as a result of the negative 40 to negative 90 millivolt action potentials mentioned before. So what an electrode array is, is that essentially it's a panel of many, many, many electrodes spanning both vertically and horizontally. This allows electrodes to pick up signals from a wide variety of locations and to be able to form a map of electrical activity that each electrode is reading. Ultimately, at the core of this idea is taking a map of the electrical activity that the brain produces and capturing it for further processing. So to sum this up, before we start talking about software and hardware, Nathan said, movement is controlled by thinking about moving my arm left, right, and up and down, and the two buttons were about thinking about wrist movement. So these movements being imagined generate electrical activity on the surface of the brain that is then captured by electrodes and sent off to a computer. So now that comes to the question about what about processing the signal. Does the hardware on the person need to actually be custom to fit that particular person. Ultimately, this is where the software starts to take a bigger role because the nitty gritty of turning that map of electrical signals into an end result, it has complications. So while I did say that the brain generally does tend to follow a set of rules, they're also highly flexible within themselves. One person's motor homunculus can look dramatically different from another person's. And this can be based off of things such as brain injury, trauma, or even potential overuse of a muscle group as seen with focal dystonia, which can result in involuntary muscle contractions and other issues. For the most part, these are neuroplasticity concerns, but regardless, because it is something that just infects people in general, it's going to impact any form of recording. So when we capture electrical signals based on a map, then send it to a computer, it can all be unique. While there are a wide variety of software techniques employed to change a signal to a particular action, they generally follow this basic guideline. You want to map a particular set of electrical activity onto a particular action. Such as for a contrived example on the screen, let's take a matrix that is 3 by 3 in size. We can see that it has certain numbers located on each quadrant. Let's pretend that this is the electrical signal that we're going to be getting from each of the electrodes. We want to map this particular 3x3 three three matrix to the arm moved up action. Now we have a different 3x3 three three matrix and we want to this to now be the arm moved down action. Of course trial and error is one way to go about solving this, but for interest sake I want to talk about the basics of a technique I learned during my comp sci degree from the pioneer of reinforcement learning. And do not worry too much about the math because I will not be getting it into it in this video because it is really out of scope, but I do want to talk about like the fundamental concepts and underpinning of it. So in reinforcement learning, there's something called temporal difference learning or TD learning when put shortly. You start off with an estimate such as matrix full of ones is going to be our estimated value for left arm being raised. Obviously this is wrong, but we enter a set of cycles with this particular first initial matrix where we're going to constantly evaluate it and see if this is wrong or correct. We then have something called a step size that will determine for each cycle of evaluation how much do we add or remove from the value. 
degrees. We arrive at our new estimate from the addition of the old estimate and step size. So in an ideal world, we would eventually arrive at the correct mapping between the 3x3 three three matrix and our move down. But of course, in this instance, this means something is going to be missing here, as I'm sure a lot of people caught on. Because how do we determine the step size? Would this ever land on a particular value? And if the step size is something static like 1 or 400, it would constantly grow each cycle and then eventually just go to infinity, which is obviously not what we want. And then this is where I actually need to talk a bit about step size in detail. So a new estimate is equal to our old estimate plus the step size. This step size is multiplied by something called the target error, and this is often depicted as target minus old estimate, or rather how far is your current estimate from where you want to be. So if you are very, very far from mapping a matrix to the left arm down, then this target error would be significantly large, and therefore you would be adding another step size value to the current estimate to get the new estimate. But as you get closer and closer, this value becomes smaller and smaller and smaller until it eventually reaches zero in an ideal but probably not realistic world. But a deeper discussion on rewards, SARSA, Q learning, target step sizes, and the rest is very out of scope for this. But based around this, you can see that one potential approach is that essentially we're going to be using the step size, and we're going to be inching all of these electrical readings to whatever the mapping is supposed to be and be like, okay, this means left arm down, this means right arm up, this means right wrist is going up, this means that we're going to have uh, pronation or supination with the wrist. I'm not really sure what movement they mapped, but either way they mapped one of those movements to it. And then finally, now that we know the action, the next step is extremely easy and we basically map that action and we're like left arm up means that you hit the W key. As Nathan stated, movement is controlled by thinking about moving my arm left and right and up and down, and the two buttons were thinking about wrist movement. And with all that said, that is the process that the brain signals that Nathan produces take to ultimately control his character in Final Fantasy XIV. And as kind of a quick recap on everything, neurons produce small millivolts during their action potentials. Groups of neurons are organized with a particular anatomy giving rise to a motor homunculus, or also known as a map of activity on the motor cortex. The voltage activity is then recorded by electrodes and sent to a computer, where the computer processes the signal and determines what the action the signal represents is based on some processing techniques such as reinforcement learning I talked about. This action, once determined, is then mapped onto a keybind on an emulated keyboard. So that was all for this video, and I really hope that this video was as cool for all of you as it was for me. I gotta say that I'm actually really inspired seeing this and anyhow if you appreciate this video and want to support me any likes comments or subscribes would be super incredibly appreciated but please do not forget to support Nathan because he's the one that shared this awesomely amazing story and so please send some love his way well thank you all so much for watching take care